We have heard so many fascinating things today, and yet, of course, if you are an awake human being, your mind has wandered at some points. You've thought about some things that you have to do. You might even have done some of them on your phone. I would actually suggest that we lean in to this modern inclination to interact with screens in a variety of ways in public spaces. What do I mean by this? Well, I think about it a lot where I work, Northwest Film Forum in Capitol Hill. Has anyone ever been there? Cool. It is an independent uh, film and art center uh, located in the heart of Capitol Hill where we show independent movies from all around the world all year round. Our audiences are out of this world. We teach a ton of film and media workshops for filmmakers at all stages of their careers. We put on the largest kids festival on the West Coast that travels nationally. We offer a ton of support services for artists. And we conduct bizarre rituals in the lobby where we dance in a circle to music until somebody wins a cake. <laughs> it's a really good way to close out a film festival and not just the one for kids. I started at the Forum as a college intern, actually. Um, and then a few years later, I was hired to be the film programmer, the one who gets to pick the movies that are shown in the theater. This was my first job out of college. Pretty rad dream job, right? Well, when I arrived, I inherited a box office in a state of deep decline. As it turns out, people don't go to the theater to see obscure independent art house movies the way that they used to. I mean, does anybody know how many views Netflix has per week? Guess. I'll give you an, a hint. It's how many views YouTube has per day. One billion. So I started experimenting with new kinds of events to get people to come back out to the theater, like a showcase of new Pacific Northwest music videos or an unorthodox live score for movies like Alien or Predator. Pretty soon, this experimentation started to inspire newer, bigger questions for me. I started to think about how the movie theater isn't the only brick and mortar cultural institution that faces a somewhat uncertain future today. I mean, there's the obvious ones like the uh, you know, music record store or the video rental store, which, by the way, I hope y'all are taking advantage of the fact that the best video rental store in the world is in your neighborhood. Give it up for Scarecrow. It's awesome. You should go there. Um, but there's also, I mean, the museum, the library, the community center, the concert venue, the college classroom. In a world that's more digital by the day, the future of these physical public spaces, these buildings, are kind of up for grabs right now. Will we still be using them for the same purposes in the future? Will we need them at all? When it comes to arts and cultural institutions, I hope that we really actively face this question. What do we want to see happen with these places in the future? For us, for those that come after us, what would happen if the movie theater does sort of fall off that precipice into extinction? Do we relinquish it to a relic of the past, a nice cultural tradition while it lasted, and then we got Netflix? Or would we be missing out on an opportunity to breathe new creative life and purpose into these buildings to make what might actually be known as a true public sphere, a way of bringing people together? I, just, I started to think about how cultural spaces like the Forum have a significantly new role to play in building the modern public sphere, and that it's up to us to define what that looks like. So the challenge before me is not, how do I get people to come out to the movie theater today? It's more like, how can people use this space to come together to learn about themselves and each other and their world through art? Today, Northwest Film Forum is more than a movie theater because we've really embraced the forum in our name, a public meeting place for open discussion. The goal is to reinvent the role of the movie theater in the cultural fabric of the city's life. Of course, we will always champion and show independent films, including ones you can't see on Netflix, nothing that we show you can. But in order to remain meaningful and relevant to the future and to future generations, as a theater, we've got to adapt. Of course, the thing that sets the movie theater apart is the ability to physically convene people together, to really build a public sphere. When you start to think about the theater this way, all of a sudden, so many more possibilities open up for what you can do when you've got a great big multi-purpose canvas and a whole ton of seats, and it also helps to have a bar in the lobby. <laughs> so what does this look like at the Film Forum? 
Enter the Seattle process. Let's talk about it some more. This is basically the daily show for Seattle. It's a local politics comedy talk show hosted by comedian Brett Hamill and featuring uh, guests like Senator Pramila Jayapal, uh, socialist uh, city council person, Shama Sawant, uh, the Black Lives Matter organizers who interrupted Bernie Sanders here in Seattle. Guess what their stage entrance was like on the show? It was great. Nobody in the audience knew it was coming. At the process, the screen becomes a canvas for tweets and jokes and games and inner titles and uh, Skype sessions and videos and a way of uh, bringing up the sordid past of a guy running for city council who used to be a male model. <laughs> As you can tell, this show isn't really like eating your civic vegetables while tuning into talk radio. People come to the show on dates, with work friends, with organizing friends, with the desire to meet somebody new, to be inspired by a leader in their city, to laugh, who knows, maybe to cry, all the things that you go to the movies for, right? Another example, the future is zero. This is a live game show that we do in the theater where we actually remove the screen entirely to reveal this elaborate two-story set that we built. The contestants each time are artists from different disciplines. Um, and on the far side there, you can see Ken Jennings, the king of Jeopardy himself, just competed a couple weeks ago. We actually tried to rig the game so that he couldn't win. He still won. <laughs> contestants compete in games like alt-right or alt-writer, where they have to look at a series of photos of nondescript dudes in glasses and guess whether they're a member of the alt-right or a writer for an alternative publication <laughs> like Pitchfork. Exhibit A, Exhibit B. In another game, they have to catch popcorn that's thrown from a cannon powered by a leaf blower on the second story of the set. And yes, that is uh, the editor for film of The Stranger, uh, Charles Mudede, who was forced to wear a hat for the entirety of the game. So both The Future is Zero and The Seattle Process have this live studio audience feel. And both of them combine art and goofy creative fun to grapple directly with political issues that are affecting people's lives today. The Seattle Process even spawned a spin-off show called The Shadow Council, which is basically a people's legislative body where the audience becomes the governing body that can propose via the democracy bucket and debate pieces of legislation, such as the Unsalted Snack Regulation Act that states that all unsalted snacks should be required to have the word unsalted be in the largest font on the bag. <laughs> Guests have included current mayoral candidate and former TED UX speaker, or UW X speaker, uh, Nikita Oliver. So how do we create this public sphere for art in action? At the forum, it means moving away from having an ordained curator choose every movie and every event that's happening and opening up new channels of access for the community and the public that we're intended to serve to tell us what they want to see. Multiple events have started in Facebook comment threads, for example. I think it's pretty clear that we can no longer do politics uncreatively. That's where art and art spaces come in, to keep it fresh, to give us ways to plug into our civic surroundings through creative expression. We all know that online conversations are different from offline ones. And it's so critical, I really believe in this, in the unique capacity of artistic events in the physical public sphere to drive political action. Art has always played a crucial role in pushing society forward by creating change in how people view and experience the world. From you know, the even recent times of Picasso's Guernica to punk music to the entirety of Ai Weiwei's career, art has always driven social change in the world. There's so much room for creative play for how we can mobilize art to create and build understanding and strength and empathy in others. It just takes a little creativity to bring it back into public spaces today. Given the heightened need for political action on a daily basis today, the forum set out to harness the potential to build a collective creative resistance on a national level. The Seventh Art Stand is an act of cinematic solidarity in uh, support of the people affected by the travel bans. It's a nationwide series of films from the countries in the travel bans that happened actually throughout this month in over 50 movie theaters, college campuses, museums, and community centers in over half of the states. It was in the New York Times, which was pretty cool, 
And it was supported by people like Ramin Barani and Woody Harrelson and Steve Buscemi and Laurie Anderson. It was an act of cinematic solidarity to show the people whose voices and stories and faces aren't seen enough on US movie theater screens that we're there with them, that we believe in supporting them. Because without the freedom to speak, to act, to interact, the possibility of democracy vanishes. And public space is where democracy happens. Visual storytelling may be the most powerful single form of communication in the world today. Think about it. The word video has become literally synonymous with the word story on Instagram and Snap. This is an incredibly powerful tool. Let's wield it wisely. You've heard me talk about just one way of thinking about reinventing one kind of cultural institution, the movie theater. But think about what can happen when you take any number of contemporary modes of expression and exchange and bring them into public spaces to infuse them with new creative purpose that are more relevant to more people today and in the future. I think we live in an incredibly exciting time to do this, and it really is up to the next generation to take these buildings and make them new again. Of course, this can look like a million different things in a million different ways, but the common ingredient is actually physically coming together IRL, in real life, in public, and I can't wait to see what you all do with that. Thank you. <laughs>